before the world of Unicode, text encoding was kind of a mess. Because you had computers being invented in different countries and you had people using them on different languages. Since the mid-70s, problems of bringing multiple language into computer text have continued to grow. You had all these people inventing their own forms of encoding for their own computers. So you had different sets of code for German. You had different sets of code for Russian. You had different sets of code for Chinese. You had different sets of code for Arabic. And then suddenly they all had to talk to each other, right? Because you had these networks. If you sent things back and forth, it would just end up in a big jumble. Kind of like when you have a cartoon character, it's like cursing, like little boxes and like weird things. Because there wasn't a common agreement on how to send languages back and forth across networks, across different computers. And this was a really big headache. Around 1987, I was contacted by this fellow named Joe Becker from Xerox. And he and his team had this great idea for just getting rid of this character code mess and just starting off afresh and having a unique encoding that would have every language in the world. What we've attempted to create is something that will work on all computers that allows us to put all modern languages together in one document. The Unicode Consortium was founded in 1991. Twelve firms, computer makers, networking, and software companies have come together under the banner of Unicode. Pull up your phone and you take a look at it and you're seeing text and the characters are all being encompassed by Unicode. No matter what phone you have, it's Unicode that is uh, representing the text. They decide what new characters to let in, what numbers to assign to them, and what other things are needed in order for software or hardware companies to implement them. The Unicode Consortium has three main projects centered around the characters, languages, and programming code. There are well over 100,000 characters for the languages of the world, plus all the emojis. But more than just those characters, languages need special information for support on computers and phones to make them work. For example, how do you alphabetize? How do the dates, times, and numbers work? And so on. And finally, computers need programming code to make this all come to life. And these are aspects that Unicode helps make happen. We cover about 80 to 90 languages very thoroughly and up to about 200 languages to a level that you could support them on a smartphone. We first got a proposal for emoji in around 2000. And we took a look at those and said, well, those are out of scope for what we're doing. Uh, those are just little pictures. Then what happened is in the late 2000s, around 2007, you had all these American companies who wanted to go into Japan because it was a huge market. So in order to be competitive in the Japanese market, these mostly American companies had to have a way to have emoji, whether or not in like email applications or messaging applications, because that's just what the Japanese population wanted. So then Unicode decided, okay, it's important for interoperability. It's gotten to be more important worldwide. Uh, we will incorporate these pictographic symbols into Unicode. So to be clear, emoji works on your devices thanks to Unicode. Emoji are overseen by the Unicode Consortium, which is a nonprofit organization based in Mountain View, California, which has a lot of members, most of which are US multinational tech companies, but there are also companies from other parts of the world, plus governments, plus individuals, like normal people can join Unicode as well. We have an annual conference. It tends to be fairly technical. We get a lot of technical sessions talking about the way people are working with Unicode, with translation, with all the different problems that go into supporting different languages on computers. But then we also have some other sessions that are much more approachable for the general public as well. And so if you want to discuss like encoding and emoji with other like-minded people, Unicode is the place for you. Unicode is driven by a lot of individuals as a volunteer organization. And if this feels important to you, if this feels like something relevant, you're gonna take out your credit cards and adopt your favorite cutest emoji. Through grants given by the Adopt a Character program, 
crypto coders out there can now actually find the resources to get these minor scripts encoded. So Emoji actually has helped in terms of actually driving the standard to be not only interoperable, not only vendor driven, but also driven by the people.